Join me today as we take a quick look around Hannibal, Missouri. Now I hope to do a more in-depth tour some other time, but I kind of ran out of time, which seems to be the theme for this trip, and so I just got some of the highlights. But I had read the signs, and I always think that is a good thing because how many people take the time to stand there and read the sign? And so I've got enough that I'm going to share with you what I do have, but I hope to share more another time because Hannibal's got a lot more to offer. But a quick look around downtown district. Well, hello everybody. I meant to do a Facebook Live before I took off this morning, but as you can see, that didn't happen. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. I'm heading out to Hannibal, Missouri, uh, because they're having a Little House cast reunion there on a riverboat, and I just couldn't resist. And so I will see you somewhere around two and a half hours. I stopped in Mount Pleasant, Iowa to have lunch, and it is now one o'clock. I am supposed to be hitting Hannibal a little after two. Like it? Well, I don't see why I oughtn't to like it. Does a boy get to whitewash a fence every day? Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. All right, here's the hotel. And right here is the Tom Sawyer district. You could not get any closer. We are going to take a little walk around. You can see they've got Mark Twain Cave, Sawyer's Creek, Twain Land Express, which I don't know what is, Haunted House, and Becky Thatcher House. Haunted House Wax Museum. Um, this really is like Branson and Keystone in a whole bunch of ways. I think Sunday night, though, there isn't a lot going on. And like I said, parking is always a problem in this type of town. This is the Wax Museum. We went to the Wax Museum when we were here when we were kids. And wax Museums, sadly, are no longer much of a thing. And this one is closed down. They are closed. Kind of too bad. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, yep, Aunt Polly's Treasures, which is a gift shop slash antique shop, it looks like. Becky Thatcher's House, Books and Gifts. Watch the step. Just so you get the idea, this is the historic area. Well, I guess the stuff's open. <laughs> Becky Thatcher's home. This was the home of Becky Thatcher, Tom Sawyer's first sweetheart in Mark Twain's book, Tom Sawyer. Tom thought Becky to be the essence of all that is charming in womanhood. 1934. So, the whole deal. Oh, here's the National Historic Marker. Mark Twain's boyhood home has been regist designated Registered National Historic Landmark under the provisions of the Historic Sites Act of August 21, 1935. This site possesses exceptional value in commemorating and illustrating the history of the United States, U.S. Department of the Interior, National Park Service, 1963. So, this is a whole deal. Tom Sawyer's Fence. Tom Sawyer's Fence. Here stood the board fence, which Tom Sawyer persuaded his gang to pay him for the privilege of whitewashing. Tom sat by and saw it was done well. Oh, and it looks like they have brushes here. 
so you can try whitewashing. That's kind of too good. Okay, let's back it out as wide as we can. Pick up the thing and whitewash. <laughs> so start your tour here. Mark Twain, Remembrance of an American Past. Like all of us, Mark Twain told stories about his childhood in order to understand who he'd become as an adult. The boy. In this house, Samuel Clemens lived a pretty typical life for a small town American boy in the 1850s. Yet his life here helped shape him to Mark Twain, one of the greatest writers in the world. The writer. As a writer in the 1870s, Mark Twain returned to this house in his memory. He used his imagination to turn the people, places, and events of his childhood into stories that captured the soul of America. The man, Mark Twain, walked back into this house on a visit to Hannibal after he was world famous. Memories of his boyhood days filled him with both pleasure and regret. interesting. They have an outdoor uh, orientation video thing. I like it. Okay. There's the statue we saw yesterday. And the road that goes down to the high river road or river boat a loading building. I don't know, do you call it a depot if it's for a riverboat? Oh, they're open daily, 9 to 5. Hi there. Hello. Begin the tour here at the Interpretive Center where we have the timeline of the Clemens family. In back the building, we have a path for you to go on to get back to Main Street. And you start at the right with Huckleberry Finn. When you go out the back door, at the left on the path, at the wall, there's a door. Open that door, and that's Mark Twain's boy at home. When you come down from the second floor and go through a gift shop, we have three buildings in the courtyard. Begin with Becky Thatcher. Then you go to the Justice of the Peace, the Grant Drug Store. And when you're back on Main Street, two blocks down on Center and Main, are the Norman Rockwell paintings at the Boy at Home Museum. And those are the seven buildings we have. I just felt a raindrop. I better get back. Um, Mark Twain's father's law office. Young Sam Clemens, Mark Twain, saw a dead man on the floor in here one night. Sam went out at a window, taking the sash along with him. I didn't need the sash, he recalled, but it was handier to take it uh, than it was to leave it, so I took it. I wasn't exactly scared, but I was considerably agitated. Grant's Drugstore. In 1846, Mark Twain's family fell on hard times and couldn't afford to live in their own home. The Grants invited the entire Clemens family to live with them in the rooms above their pharmacy. They shared their roof and their food and allowed Mr. Clemens to get his career and finances in shape. The space was small, but their hearts were grand, and for a brief time, this was Mark Twain's home. You can see the river wall there. And we're going to head back because, as you can see, it looks like it's going to rain, and I want to get my jacket, and then I guess go up and go to the bathroom and then head over to the riverboat. Today is the morning after the riverboat event and I spent the night in Hannibal. I'm talking about the hotel a little bit um, and I was going to do an episode of the podcast this morning but I slept late 
and I have to head home because sadly you can't pick the dates of events and I have other stuff going on. So I will see you when I get home and I really hope that I'll get back to see the Tom Sawyer stuff real soon. I just want to take a minute and tell you before I head out of Hannibal that uh, Hannibal is kind of a restaurant row if you're going along the bluff over the actual town it um, they have a whole bunch of chain restaurants because these are tourists coming in uh, you know I always say about Pepin is it has more good restaurants than any town with that population ought to be able to support and they have more chain restaurants here than they should be able to support and they have a lot of chains that we don't have. Uh, they've got Sonic, which we're supposed to be getting, uh, and they had a Golden Corral, though I did not look and see if it was still here. And it's just, uh, you go through it on the way to Mansfield from our house. So if you like, well, one way. Uh, so it's just something to bear in mind if you're considering a trip to Hannibal. And I'm off. Thank you for joining me on a quick look around Hannibal, Missouri, home of Samuel Clemens and Molly Brown of Titanic fame. I hope that you've enjoyed learning more a little bit about Sam Clemens, the real Mark Twain, and that you'll want to come yourself. Remember to brighten the corner where you are and find me all around the web under Trundle Bed Tales. If you like finding tours of places that aren't Iowa and aren't Laura Ingalls Wilder, leave a comment below.